So I've done a ton of research trying to figure out how Goldie's is doing their beef ribs. And today I'm going to be giving you everything I found and we're going to try to cook it their way. See how these things come out. So as you guys are probably aware, Goldie's Barbecue was voted number one in Texas Monthly a while back. And ever since then, they have been very popular. And I tried their brisket method and it came out absolutely fantastic. I have a video on that. If you haven't seen it, I'll make sure to put a link down below. Now what got me wanting to try their beef rib method was a video that I found on the Meat Church's YouTube. If you guys haven't seen the Meat Church, be sure to check out their YouTube channel. They have some of the best recipes out there. Now in this video on the Meat Church's YouTube channel for the beef ribs, they actually went to Goldie's Barbecue and they were working with Johnny from Jerby's Barbecue, who is a co-owner at Goldie's Barbecue. And he showed them the method that they supposedly use on their beef ribs there. And there were some really cool methods that they were trying out on these beef ribs and that's really what got me intrigued. Now I was doing a little bit more research and I found on Johnny's YouTube channel called Jerby's Barbecue, he had two beef rib videos showing how he also does beef ribs. Now, if you guys have not seen Jerby's Barbecue, be sure to check out that YouTube channel. He is one of the most knowledgeable barbecue people out there and he's giving away free information on his channel. That is really, really good information. So be sure to check out his channel. Now, the two videos he made were about two years old and the Meat Church video was a year old. So it was a little more recent. Now on Jerby's channel, when he was doing the beef ribs, he was being much more creative and he said himself that that's what he's going to be doing on the YouTube channel. And when he's at Goldie's Barbecue, he's going to stick with the tried and true methods. So I'm going to be basing this recipe off of what he did in the Meat Church YouTube video mostly. But again, be sure to check out his channel because both those beef rib videos were absolutely fantastic and he had some really cool ideas. But enough talking about it. Let's get right into these beef ribs so we can get them prepped and onto the smoker. So the nice thing about beef ribs is there really isn't much prep. A lot of times when I've done beef ribs, I will cut this fat cap off, but I wrap the beef ribs usually when I do them. With this method, we're not gonna be wrapping, so he leaves this fat cap on because this will get completely rendered by the time they're finished. So what he does do is goes to the bottom, and I'm gonna cut just some of these scraggly pieces off here. And you wanna leave the membrane on because that's gonna help keep these ribs together. All he does is just score it with an X on the back. And that is it. Then you come up to the top here and what he likes to do is trim these corners down so they're not as pointy, so they won't burn up. So I'm just gonna go around, kind of trim these a little bit. All right, and that is it. And a big thing to barbecue that a lot of people overlook is the aerodynamics of the meat. That is one of the most important things you can do for barbecue is make sure your piece of meat is aerodynamic. It's gonna keep all those edges from getting burnt up. So the next step is seasoning. And in each video, he had a different style of binder and seasoning. So in one of the videos, he uses mustard as a binder. In the other video, he actually does two racks of beef ribs and I believe he uses hot sauce as a binder for one and then a honey water mixture for the other, which is a very interesting binder to me. Now in the Meat Church video, which what we're gonna be doing today, he uses a spritz of Worcestershire sauce and water. Now again, seasoning is different in each of the videos. In one of them, he's using, I believe, seasonal, some garlic salt, pepper. In another one, I believe he's using garlic powder, Lowry's, some beef bouillon, which is similar to the Meat Church video, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. So here I have that Worcestershire sauce and water. I'm just gonna give it a quick spritz here. I usually don't use a binder, but I wanna go with the method that he goes with. So we're using a binder today. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is a light layer of pepper. He says they do a lighter layer on the beef ribs than they do the brisket. Make sure you get your sides. Next, we're gonna go on with the Lowry's. And this is known to be used in a lot of barbecue in Texas. I think it's a good idea because it does have some sugar in there. With all the fat on here, I believe you're gonna want some sweetness. And he did a very generous coat of the Lowry's on here, mostly on the top. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Nice heavy coat of the Lowry's, as you can see. 
Now, the last ingredient here, I think there's more, but this is all he stated. This is a little beef bouillon I have here. Now, I picked up the sodium-free beef bouillon because I didn't want this to be too salty. I think we have plenty of salt with that Lowry's on there, but I think this beef bouillon is a great idea, and I'm excited to see how this comes out flavor-wise. And again, he put a good amount on there, and then just pat this in. So this is a heavy coating of seasoning, and I usually wouldn't go this heavy, especially with some beef ribs, but this is how it looked in the Meat Church video. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with this. Now I'm probably just gonna let these sit maybe for a few minutes just to let this seasoning kind of get wet a little bit. It shouldn't take long. Now in Jerby's videos, he showed how he likes to get these on his smoker and start his fire. What he does is puts these on a cold smoker, then starts his fire, so these get some of that awesome smoke that you get from starting a fire in the beginning. Now, yes, it does seem like dirty smoke, but he's not cooking it constantly with that dirty smoke. Just getting some of that smoke in the beginning is not a problem. It actually will add some fantastic flavor. He also puts some beef tallow in there as well, which is a fantastic idea. Now, I did want to try that method today, but I needed to clean my smoker. Just a quick clean, and the way I like to do that is I like to warm it up, clean the grates, and then just rub it down with some oil when it's hot. So unfortunately today, I'm not gonna be able to put these on a cold pit, but I tried to let it cool down a little bit. That's because Jerby says he runs the pit at around 200 degrees for an hour. After that, he kicks it up to 300 and lets these go for another seven to eight hours unwrapped at 300 degrees. That hot temperature is really gonna help render the fat on these beef ribs. And he's using a large offset smoker, similar to what I have, except for mine is reverse flow. Now, if you're using these big style of smokers, you have a lot of air movement, which allows you to run a hotter temperature. If you have a very small offset smoker or a pellet smoker, some 300 degrees might be a little too hot for these. But these are looking pretty good, so let's go ahead, throw them on the pit. All right, so you can see we are right at the 200 mark here. Let's get these beef ribs on. These are going on the top rack. And I always put the thicker end towards where the heat's coming from. And I have a piece of blocker wood here because on this smoker, there's a lot of heat coming through here. But that's it, let's get this closed up and let these things smoke. All right, so we have just reached that one hour mark at 200 degrees. I'm now starting to crank this smoker up to get it near 300 degrees. It's already got some nice color and now all we wanna do is just get this fat rendered. We're gonna do a nice hot cook on this at 300 degrees. It's gonna create a wonderful bark and really let that fat render down. So I'm probably gonna check on these beef ribs in another Jeez. All right, we got some woodwork here, but I'm gonna check on these beef ribs in another few hours, maybe give them a spritz, but I will see you then. All right, so we are six hours in on the beef ribs. Let's check these out. Yeah, these are looking really, really nice. Just check out the bark we got going on there. It feels super tender. Yeah. That bark on there is incredible. So these are probably getting pretty close to being done. Now on Jerby's barbecue, he went by feel. So we just grab the ribs. And I don't have gloves, so it's a little hot, but just he just kind of felt to see how tender they were. And these still need a little bit more time, but I'll give you a temp check anyway. We're at 196. And they do feel pretty good, but definitely need a little more time. So the seven, eight hour mark is looking about perfect for these beef ribs. Let me give you a little bit of a close up here. That is incredible. And this is what that no wrap is gonna do for you. I'm gonna let this go probably for another hour or two till they are super tender. So I'll see you back here when they are ready to pull. Now before that, I just wanna say, I have been spritzing this with a little bit of pickle juice. This is probably only the third time I've spritzed it, and I didn't start spritzing it until five hour mark, probably. Now, Johnny from Jerby's Barbecue didn't say that he used any sort of a spritz, but on one of the videos, he was mopping this with beef tallow, which is an interesting way to go, but we're gonna put beef tallow on this when it is finished, because that's how he did it in the Meat Church video. But. I will see you guys when this is ready to pull off. All right, so we just hit the eight hour mark on those beef ribs. And as you can see, I'm losing a little light, 
but they are finished. I checked them, we're temping out at about 203 degrees. More importantly, the bark looks absolutely fantastic and I can feel how tender they are. So I'm gonna get them pulled off and we're gonna get them wrapped up to let them rest. So I'm gonna be wrapping in aluminum foil. Let me go grab those beef ribs. And there we are. So I hope you can see, even though it is dark, how nice these beef ribs look. And if you see, that's the tenderness you're looking for. See how they just wanna kind of fall apart? Beautiful. So I'm just gonna get these wrapped up in some foil. Now we let them rest for one hour, and then after that, I'm gonna unwrap them, pour some beef towel over them, let them rest for another half an hour, then we will be ready to try them out. Well, let's jump right ahead and slice into these beauties. So the beef ribs are done and they smell absolutely fantastic. And more importantly, the bark on here is ridiculous. I have never seen bark this crispy and all I can smell is just deliciously rendered fat. So far this seems like a huge success, but I let them rest for an hour, I unwrapped them, I dumped a bunch of tallow over it. You can see it already looks kind of dry, so it's soaked up a lot of that tallow already. Let it sit for another half an hour, and here we are. I'm gonna slice this up so we can see how it came out. Oh yeah, I don't know if you can hear how crispy that crust is. Oh yeah. Check that out. Nice and juicy. Look at that, the crust on here. This is what I'm talking about, super crispy, bark this is an amazing beef rib i need to oh it's still hot i want to grab a nice piece of this bark you can see how tender that is definitely could probably let this rest a little bit longer but just check out how tender that is and i want to give this crispy bark a try so here we go wow Wow, guys, really, dude, this bark is ridiculous. Mm. This might be, it is the best beef rib I have ever had. Very happy I went with the sodium-free bouillon because it is a little salty if you just have the bark, but if you mix it up with this savory meat, it is absolutely delicious. This is a beef rib, guys, and you can see it's cooked to perfection, super tender. This fat is rendered down beautifully, so good. Now, if you want to know how to do the Goldie's brisket, which is just as good as these beef ribs, check out this video right over here. And if you're looking to make some of that tallow, check this video out over here. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like, it really helps out the channel. And if you are new, you can subscribe right over here. But most importantly, get out there and smoke something good. Mmm, amazing.